Hey guys, and welcome to Insurgency. Uh, this is going to be the first in over a dozen or so videos that you could expect to uh, hit the channel over the next couple weeks as I catch up on my massive backlog of games that I have review codes for that I just didn't have time to get around to reviewing until now. Um, so in the favor of full disclosure, I didn't pay for Insurgency, I got a review code from a PR firm, you know, same shtick that applies to all my review videos. Um, what is Insurgency? Insurgency is a modern FPS that was made in the Source Engine. I think originally it was a mod for Source and then later it became the uh, full release follow-up game that you see in front of you. Um, Source, if you're not familiar with it, the same engine that Valve uses for Half-Life games, Portal, CSGO, all that stuff. Um, all their first-person games are known as Source. I don't know if I have to imagine TF2 is also made in Source. I don't know about Dota. Um, obviously, there's a million comparisons to be made here to CSGO, outside of just the engine. Um, you probably won't hear too many from me, though, since I've hardly played more than a couple hours of either of them. Um, so it's an indie game, uh, both developed and published by New World Interactive. Uh, it was released on Steam back in January of 2014, which... I think about it, that was over two, almost two and a half years ago. Um, but recently they just released a community mod project called Day of Infamy, which is a World War II mod that is a lot for the game. Um, for the first little while of the video, I'm going to be talking about the base game, and then, I mean, 99% of that applies to the mod as well, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and near the end, I'll get into a little more detail with the, um, the Day of Infamy mod. Uh, first up, the game is available for, on Steam for $17 Canadian. Uh, that's probably $15 US. Um, and there is a four-pack bundle for $50. Bucks. However, as a heads up, um, Insurgency's been in a lot of bundles from places like Indie Gala, Bundle Stars, things like that. So do your homework before you buy it, just in case you can save yourself money. Um, let's see. Right now, I mean... The game looks decent. Um, I've never been one to care that much for high fidelity or realism all that much. I've always been a uh, FPS over graphics kind of guy, uh, especially with something that requires timing and precision like this. Um, and I've been getting a solid 60 frames per second off camera on my old hunk of junk PC with no crashes or anything like that. There's some small stuttering during loads, uh, very minor ones. They get a little more um, noticeable when I start recording things with OBS. Um, you might see a bunch of stuttering during the video of the footage that I've got playing in the background. There was some stuttering issues when I was recording with OBS, but nothing major, nothing game breaking or anything. Um, but just keep in mind, if you do plan to stream the game yourself or something, make sure your computer is better than mine. It shouldn't be too hard. Um, I've set the bar pretty low. Um, according to the Steam page, there are 16 different maps with 7 game modes allowing up to 32 players and that there's 5 co-op objective based modes. Um, I didn't take the time to double check these numbers, mostly because I imagine those are release numbers from 2 years ago and with the amount of community mod support from Steam Workshop, there's probably a lot more available. Um, so those numbers are basically meaningless because there's nigh infinite possibilities for maps and game modes and things uh, that you could download through Workshop. Like this is the kind of game that back in high school I would have loved. Like we, we'd all sit in the computer lab and we'd play Unreal Tournament, we'd play Dodo, we'd play WoW, and there'd be like anywhere from a half a dozen to like a full classroom of us in the computer lab playing video games all on land or whatever. And I would have preferred for something like this. Um, back then, but uh, I mean, let's, you probably noticed in the video in the background, let's let's be real, I suck at FPSs, um, so this entire video is probably going to have terrible performance on my part in the background, um, where I get maybe a kill before dying and having to start over. Um, part of that stems from the fact that I was never really a fan of modern FPS, uh, I always kind of preferred Halo sci-fi aesthetic and like the massive variety in guns, um, but I mean I was never any good at those either. There's certainly a market for modern FPS, I'm just, I'm not really a part of it. Um, there is a tutorial for the game, I played it, 
Um, however, it's a source game, so it suffers from that awful turn the camera away from the speaker and then all of a sudden you hear nothing problem that all source games seem to have. And since the majority of the time the speaker is up in the rafters above you in the warehouse, uh, it's really easy to just miss your instructions entirely. Um, I did turn on subtitles and they just aren't on, so I don't know what the issue is there. I imagine it's not something terribly important outside of the tutorial, so nobody really cares, so maybe it just never got fixed, or maybe I don't understand how to set the options, but I've gone back to the options menu and it says it's on, and I just wasn't getting subtitles at all. Um, a little irksome that a two-year-old game just doesn't have working subtitles, but again, if you're playing along with your friends, subtitles are probably not something you even want on in the, in the first place. Um, Moreover, I don't know if I was just missing something, but I was unable to complete the tutorial. Either I missed a set of instructions or something because the audio just wasn't there because I was facing the wrong way, or what, but at some point, progress just stopped happening. Doors stopped opening and I just couldn't continue. So at some point I just I, I waited around for a little bit, I tried shooting some things, nothing happened, I gave up on the tutorial and just started playing solo games. Um, I didn't play online at all in my testing. Like, I didn't play, like, pickup groups or anything like that. Because um, I knew it was just going to be an awful experience for someone of my skill level, where the game has a very clear competitive focus, and I'm sure that's going to attract a lot of people, but I'm not one of those people, and I'm just going to be the guy that everybody hates to have on their team. Um, but I did play a bunch of solo games. Um, a big plus for me is that there are bots. Um, I would prefer some more control over bot selection, maybe like bot difficulty options, a lot of, like Quake and Unreal and all the other classic arena shooters had. Um, there is a dedicated server browser, which is real nice. Uh, better than that nonsense where you just have to, you know, click the start game button and you end up queuing until you just hope it matches you properly. Um, especially recently there have been all sorts of issues with games that go through that sort of system to find matchmaking. So I'm glad to see a dedicated server browser where, it, it, as far as I know, I mean, I have to test it myself, but as far as I know, it just works. Um, once you get into the game, the first thing you get to do is there's a class-based system that honestly feels largely arbitrary. Like, it only is there to limit weapon choice. Um, I played most of all of my games as Sniper to start with, which feels like hot trash in this game. Like, your primary weapon is useless on most maps because most of the maps, at least that I played, were very condensed. Uh, there are a couple maps where it was a little more open, but gameplay is just so fast and hectic that you don't have time to, like, sit and find a target from long range. Um, especially because, like, the few maps that do have sniper nests, you can't sit there long enough. The second you start firing, the bots know where you are, they come after you. And you're dead. You just get shot in the back of the head while you're taking aim. Um, outside of that, you just end up... like it, It's mostly just you're limiting your primary weapon to one weapon uh, based on your class. As far as I can tell, that's the only difference in the class-based system. There aren't any like perks or anything that I can find. It was just what kind of primary weapon do you want to be using. Do you want to be bringing an assault rifle, a sniper rifle, um, you know, heavier weapons, grenade launchers, shotguns, that kind of thing. I didn't play around too much with the different classes. What I'd mostly do is I'd start game as Sniper, and then when I die and got to take control of one of my ally bots, I would uh, just use whatever they were using. So I've used some of the other guns, and as far as I can tell from my limited play experience, Sniper's bad. Uh, there is lots of customizability in the weapon loadouts, though. Like, you can bring... Um, you have a set amount of money and a weight like a quip load kind of thing and like there's the amount of customizability in this is above my like head but like there's flashlights and i don't understand how they use them or what they do there's an equip burden where it's like a weight the more things you bring the more your weight bar fills up and then you have a currency that you can spend on what you can bring so you have to sit there and be like okay do i want a scope on my sniper rifle, do I want a laser sight on my weapon so that I can get better aim without looking on the sights, do I want to bring extra ammo, do I want to bring an extra, like a second type of grenade, all this stuff is going to cost me currency and or weight, um, do I want to bring heavier armor that's going to weigh me down a lot more, I'm not going to be bringing any other guns, which is kind of interesting, that part of the class system I like, the, the weapon loadout thing I like, I just don't like the arbitrary restriction on what gun I can bring based on what class I started as. 
Um, I get it uh, factors into some kind of balance thing, since the game is primarily a team-based game. Um, so this way each team is going to have one sniper, they're going to have one rifleman, they're going to have one, one you know, so on and so forth. Um, bot difficulty, as far as I've been able to tell, very erratic. Maybe it's just that it's one side. Um, sometimes I get killed from off screen from a bot that I couldn't see anywhere, and sometimes I'm staring at a bot two feet away from me, and I'm looking through my scope trying to figure out, is he a friendly? Like, he doesn't have a green diamond and a name on, so he must not be a friendly, but he's not shooting at me. And then he, after 10 seconds or so, he, he shoots at me, and I, I shoot him in the head. Um, ally bot, AI, complete trash. Um, as I'm recording this audio, I don't know what footage is playing in the background, so, um... I don't know if it's already shown up or if it'll show up later. I'll probably splice it in about now. Um, there is a bit, I think I have it recorded, where I'm trying to go prone to take a sniping shot. And you can see my other three buddy bots are just like running into themselves and me and just crashing. Like their AI is just bugging right out. And it happens a bunch that whole level. Um, uh, additionally, when I played later the, the day of um, Infamy mod, there for the most part the bots just don't do anything. I, ca I took a control point and then I noticed the bots started moving up, and then they get to the control point I took and they just stop moving past that. And so it was, it was largely a solo experience. Um, yeah, AI and a the bit of that ally AI trash enemy AI. Difficult, but at the same time dumb. It'll just let you stand there and reload in front of it sometimes, and then sometimes it'll shoot you while you're trying to fight. Like it's it's up and down. Um, yeah, I could probably use some work, although I imagine it's not a focus. Um, so I don't blame it for not being great. Mostly it's just there, I imagine, for you to practice and learn maps against before you online, which is fine. It, it fills that role. Um, that's basically it for insurgency as far as the base game tons of maps tons of mode tons of customizability if those are things you're looking for in a modern fps then great if you've especially been itching um for all of that in a world war ii shooter then the day of infamy mod that just came out is probably something you'll love um the mod single player support seems a little weird when i was first trying to play with it it would spawn they would start the game and there'd be bots there. And then when the match timer, the like pre-game match timer ended and the match started, the bots would just vanish. And I'd be alone. And I have to take on 15 guys by myself. Or I'd have to defend a control point by myself. And it was impossible. Um, I know one of the maps, I'm running up the beach, and the second I get onto the beach, a German machine gunner mows me down from across the map in seconds. Um, but the footage that I'll probably have in the background right now, you can see me going through um, one map where I actually have bots. I, I don't know what I did to get these bots. I don't know if maybe I was in a the different Lord, mode of the mod or what, but I have bots all of a sudden. The Again, the bot AI is terrible. These bots do not help at all. I basically am just making solo runs, like Dark Souls style, from the spawn point to the the checkpoint like capture point for going prone because there's no enemies around because the enemy eye doesn't come towards me until i'm within a vicinity of it so i just capture a point and i move towards that point and now all the ai are there and i have to deal with them and as far as i could tell it was just a matter of gunning them down until they weren't there in my way anymore and i just as long as i took out one or two guys every spawn I had more allies than I had more ally bots to go through than the enemy had bots to throw in my way. Um, but it's a great mod. Uh, completely changes up the guns. Uh, the maps look and feel like a great World War II shooter. The prone button is way useful, like way more the, so than in the uh, the base game. Uh, in the base game, you can just crouch, or you just even more than just crouch, like you don't really take cover, you just kind of run at the guys, mow them down. Very Call of Duty style. Um, but in the uh, World War II mod, the maps are much larger and they're laid out in a way that you, you can actually take advantage of the prone to great extent. I was a huge fan of the prone button when I was playing through uh, Dave Infamy. 
Um, I mean, I can remember playing a ton of World War II shooters back in like the late 90s, early 2000s. Like Medal of Honor and stuff like that with my little brother on the PS2 was great. And I remember when Halo came out, they all just kind of disappeared. And then Call of Duty got huge. And I remember, you know, a lot of people seem to be craving a classic World War II era shooter. And there just weren't any to be found. So it's really nice to see that it's kind of come back um, in such a great way. Like, this is a great World War II shooter. More than acceptable to play online with your friends, go through, you know, D-Day and stuff. It's a little strange to see it as a mod for a modern shooter. That for a modern shooter, just go classic all of a sudden. But at the same time, I suppose DayZ came out of Arma, so it's not that surprising, I guess. Um, if you want a sweet World War II shooter, then check out the Day of Infamy mod for Insurgency. Um, the mod itself is free, you just go on the Steam Workshop, subscribe to it. It's like four or five different maps and one or two other things, and then boom, it takes only a couple minutes to download. Probably seconds if you've got a greater connection than I do. Hours if you've got a worse one, I suppose. Um, if you want a more competitive and more realistic CSGO, Insurgency, just the base game, got your back. Um, I think it's like the same price as CSGO 2. So, I mean, and you can get it, again, you can get it in bundles and on sales and stuff cheaper than you can get CSGO, so. Yeah, uh, mod is free, so, like, it, super cheap to check out as far as just getting a World War II shooter. Um, as far as I can tell, it has a thriving community of dedicated players um, who are probably very, very competitive, so you'll probably want to play bot games and get used to things first before you even jump into lobbies. Um, but, they, and, and I mean, that's possibly due to, in part, to the ease of availability through sales and bundles that CSGO just doesn't have in a, as abundance. Um, additionally, from what I can tell from the news page on the main menu, the devs seem to stream regularly and answer Q&As and stuff like that, and they seem to make a huge effort to highlight awesome mods like the Day of Infamy. I know... When I was taking a look at the game, there was um, a bunch of talk about an Army of Five mod that was making its rounds. Um, so yeah, Insurgency, great game, great shooter. Um, as for me, not really my jam. Um, I mean, I'm not one that's going to probably play shooters a whole lot, so it's not something I'm probably going to go back to. I mean, I have a buddy of mine that owns the game too, so I might play some co-op maps with him sometime. But other than that, probably not something I'm going to be picking up again post this review. Um, but that's entirely due to my own personal preference. I do like the game. I think it, it does what it wants to do great. And then some. Um, great game. Lot to offer. Just not what I'm looking for. Uh, if you want to pick it up, I'll have the link to the Steam page for the game in the description. And I'll probably also put a link to the Day of Infamy mods. Um, workshop page in the description as well so you can pick it up and just boom click the subscribe button get your little check marks and let it all download at once uh give it a shot yeah if, if it's something you're looking for it i'm sure you will be more than pleased with the results um but yeah that's it for me so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you later bye for now